There was something on Mars that killed people. One expedition vanished without a trace. Out of another, only one man came back. That was Johnny Wendt, the only man who had seen Mars and lived. His knowledge could be decisive in the desperate east-west race for space. But Johnny didn't know what it was that made Mars a death trap. And he didn't know he'd brought it back with him. Judith Merrill's anthologies and short stories have won her a unique place in science fiction. Now, in her second full-length novel, she has turned in a top-flight dramatic narrative of the near future. So, there's a man in our town who has lived essentially inside a bubble since the early 1970s because of immunodeficiency. His case was much like David Vetter's, although Vetter died tragically and far, far too young. Vetter's story was made famous by John Travolta in the movie The Boy in the Plastic Bubble. After that, of course, so-called bubble boys entered popular culture as a phenomenon unto themselves. Steve Carlsgaard, our own bubble man, has lived a long and apparently a happy life. He did not outgrow his condition, and he never risked bone marrow surgery, so he has continued his existence much as he lived in the 70s, inside plastic tubing, something like a hamster at home, and in a suit that looks an awful lot like a spacesuit when in town. He visits Sales often, my own favorite hometown diner, although he doesn't eat. Of course, he can't take his helmet off, but he likes to talk and to hear stories from around town. He jokes with the fishermen that he'll come join them one day, but they better be careful of their hooks. I'm mentioning Steve today because of what has happened recently, no doubt due to the blurring, although this explanation provides no real meaning. It's just a thing we say now whenever anything strange has happened. It must be because of the blurring. The thing is, well... Steve is now followed by a, it seems like a person, another person in a suit. But this person does not interact with us at all, only with Steve, and he or it doesn't really interact with Steve. He just follows Steve, does what Steve does, but from some distance behind Steve, kind of like a shadow. Except this person is definitely no shadow. This person wears a suit too, but not exactly like Steve's suit. This person's suit seems more advanced, not quite so bulky. Steve has trouble turning around, of course, and when he does turn around, it's not like he can just turn his neck. He has to turn his whole body, and the person behind him is always directly behind him, so Steve can't really see the person, although he does ask about him. He refers to this person as an it. Is it still there? We've asked Steve what happens when he goes home, does it just wait outside? It's inside. What? We ask. How is that possible? Does it just follow you around inside your house? Have you ever tried to talk to it? What does it look like? We have so many questions. I don't know. Steve has never tried to talk to it, not even the first time it appeared, although now he can't remember when that was. It seems to him it has always been there, even before other people could see it. It's like the echo inside his helmet, the shadow behind all of his thoughts. Like when he thinks, as he sometimes does, that he is all alone here, even when he's among us. And we are some kind of show, some kind of silly soap opera, to while away his hours as he voyages endlessly through space, or something like that. But you know we're real, right? We ask him. He looks at us wearily. Some people think the thing behind Steve is his loneliness. Or maybe that's the wrong word. Aloneness might be a better word. It's his aloneness, the thing behind him. And it's something like a projection, something like a dream. But it's been growing more and more real, and it's clearly getting closer to him over time. Nearer to him, that is, in a physical sense. Not 20 feet behind him or 10, but now more like 5 feet. Most recently, we were awakened the other morning by a loud roaring. We could hear it all across town. Some people got up quickly enough to see a rocket ship rising into the sky. It had launched from a field on high side somewhere. It was discovered later that Steve was missing. I'll keep the details brief. A note was found pinned to his door. It was signed by Steve. His suit was found inside the house. There was no trace of the stranger. The note read, We are going home. And that was it.